Three out of four livestock producers say they want to increase or at least maintain their use of pastures so they can conserve fodder for their stock and supply nitrogen for crops. However, many producers who have improved their pastures have not planted the superior new legumes developed in recent years. James Fremantle reports. Historically, lucerne has been the legume of choice for many livestock producers. Now trials of new legume species that offer the promise of dramatic crop pasture productivity growth have taken root in New South Wales, with encouraging results. We're in New South Wales, uh, between Cowra and Young, a small place called Greenthorpe. Yeah, we've had a 550 mil rainfall here, and uh, we have granite, granite soils, and we run uh, cropping and, and grazing with a composite U mob with uh, producing prime leaves. The species being trialled at Greenthorpe, including bladder clover, French cerradella and bicerula, have done well in Western Australia. The challenge is to prove their effectiveness in the east, and so far, so good. When you compare them to sub clover, uh, we're getting good, good herbage yields and good seed yields, even in dry years. And from the trials, we've sort of seen the clovers to do uh, three and a half sort of tonnes to the hectare um, by the end of September. The bicerula has been able to do up around the five tonne. Research agronomist Belinda Hackney is responsible for trialling the new legumes across New South Wales. And basically what we did was we went to farmers with a series of workshops that involved about 300 farmers and 40 advisors and said, you know, we've got these new legumes, this is their characteristics, how would you like to see them used? And so it's really been a farmer driven um, type of a project. Some varieties, like bladder clover, are completely new to world agriculture, so there's a fair bit to learn. So in really tough years we've seen it produce up to 800 kilos of seed per hectare, whereas subclover struggled to produce 100 under those conditions. It doesn't have any of the oestrogenic problems that some of the old subclover varieties had, um, and yeah, generally it seems to be very palatable, high quality species. With a root system extending as deep as two metres in sandy soil, French Cerradella gives high quality grazing through spring and well into summer. Well for French Cerradella, in the last two or three years when this trial has been running, which has been a very dry period in New South Wales, herbage production has been two and a half to three times higher than it has been on subclover. Um, palatability of French Cerradella is very good, um, animals very readily accept it and it's often the first species that they'll graze. Um, in terms of protein, it's very high, uh, and in terms of digestibility, it's very high. So potentially very valuable species for um, animal production systems. And with up to 95% hard seed, Bicerula can survive usefully long crop rotations. With Bicerula, you can probably go two or three, or perhaps even four crops, and still have it regenerate without the need for re-sowing. You're looking at sort of one to one and a half million seeds per kilogram compared to sort of 300,000 to 500,000 for subclover. So it's very prolific, it sets a lot of seed and because a high proportion of that is hard, once you have a seed bank established, it is very persistent. MLA Pastures and Resource Management Project Manager Cameron Allen predicts uptake will flourish with proven region specific results. The opportunity in this program is that we're getting seed on farm and producers growing it in their local area to understand yes this does work for me. A survey of New South Wales producers in 2007 showed a very low uptake rate of new legume species, in fact less than 5%, but a very strong interest in learning how to use them. So the project's focus has been on developing educational materials so that farmers have the information they need to put them to good use. The issue is all about confidence and that's confidence in the performance of those plant varieties, what those new varieties will do in terms of uh, will they grow, Where are they relevant in my region, and also how do they then support animal production. The opportunity in utilising these new legume species are that they will assist reducing the cost of production for producers because they offer flexibility and can reduce fertiliser inputs. Turning out prime lambs requires plenty of spring and summer feed and it's here that David and his sister Julie Bryan see the benefits of the new legumes. Well we just find it as a, um, a good low risk opportunity, like we don't have to keep re-sowing legumes and 
and it's a good way to um, cut out some of the expenses in, in producing high quality forage for producing prime lambs. It's a good way to not have to keep turning the soil and sowing. It, it, it's a legume so obviously it's building your soil base and, uh, and you get the advantage of having high quality feed and good feed conversion. Regional trialling provides the evidence producers need to implement significant change. But the opportunity has been that uh, it's having a marked impact on producers. They're seeing the benefits simply because I think they have seen regionally relevant information. We're thinking about trialling some summer sowing next year. Sow it in the summer with the inoculum, let it break down into the autumn and then um, yeah, get it up and establish that way. And then we're thinking we might try some twin sowing as well where you sow wheat crop and then you put the hard seed in in the small seed box and then that comes up the following year. They're a low risk option so they, they help you increase your soil fertility without large import costs. Um, they're always there and, and you can rotate that quite easily in a cropping program and then you can capitalise that in a meat system and, um, and gain the, the value there so it, it works well that way. Yeah.